Welcome back to episode 6 of our series of videos on databases and database users. Let's proceed. Here you see an example of a database listing of relations. The late relations are student, course, section, grade report, prerequisite, the same ones we've been talking about throughout this entire series. Notice the term relations, which is the database term that describes an object that is being stored, student, course, section. And then the columns of each one. So the column name, the data type, and the relation. For example, we see that there is a column name, name, that is a character data type that's 30 characters long, then it's in the student relation. There is a student number. That's a column named student number. That is four characters long, and that belongs in the student relation as well. And then we have another column named class that is an integer that's only one character long that is also in the student table. Remember the class was one for freshman, two for sophomore, and so on. So you see that these, these structures that are in the relational database model. And so as a result, when you're writing the code to access this, one simply has to specify, I need the name out of the student relation. I need the major out of the student relation. Or I need the course name out of the course relation don't have to specify how to find that information on a storage device. A database typically has many users, each of whom may require different view or perspective of the database. A view may be a subset of the database or it may contain virtual data that is derived from the data files but is not actually stored. Some users may not need to be aware of whether the data they are referring to is stored or derived. For example, let's say that you have a record containing information about widgets and you want to know how much money you have tied up in these widgets. Well, the user can write a script or a program to look up the widget by its name or inventory ID and take a piece of data that is stored there, quantity on hand, and multiply it times another piece of data that is also stored there, the cost, do the math, and give the user the total amount of money tied up in widgets. It's not necessary to store the total amount of money tied up in widgets in the database. It's a derived value. A multi-user database management systems whose users have a variety of distinct applications, must provide facilities for defining multiple views. Think about your university system for a minute. The same database is used by many different departments, from financial aid to the registrar to the academic departments. Each has a different need, and each requires different views of the data. A multi-user database system must allow multiple users to access the database at the same time. This is essential if data for multiple applications is to be integrated and maintained in a single database, such as your student information system. The database management system must include concurrency control software. Make a note of that. Concurrency control software to ensure that several users trying to update the same data do so in a controlled manner. Why don't we make concurrency control software the mystery word for this act? So the database management system must include concurrency control software to ensure that several users trying to update the same data can do so in a controlled manner so that the result of the update is correct. Imagine that user A is accessing a record to update some data element in that record, such as the price of an item. While user A is working on the update, user B also retrieves the same record to update another data element, for example, the date of last order. What happens when user A completes the update and saves? 
Then user B also completes the update and saves. Is user A's new price still there? Or did user B's save override it? These are the issues that the concurrency control software is responsible for addressing. These issues are critical for online transaction processing applications, like a car rental application, for example, when you have multiple agents written the same inventory of cars. You would have some very unhappy customers if a car was rented to two different people at the same time. The concept of transaction can be central to many database applications. A transaction is an executing program or a process that includes one or more database accesses, such as the reading of a record or updating of a database record. Each transaction is supposed to execute a logically correct database access if executed in its entirety without interference of, from other transactions. The database system must enforce several transaction properties. The isolation property ensures that each transaction appears to execute in isolation from other transactions even though hundreds of transactions may be executing concurrently. The atomicity property ensures that either all the database operations in a transaction are executed or none are. Okay, that completes this episode of our series on databases and database users. Don't forget to go down below and put in our mystery word for this episode. Go out to the coursework page and complete the Check My Knowledge assignment on this episode. And when you're ready, come on back.